Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, Sense from a Hat. It's been, I think, over a month since I've done one of these videos. And if you guys have read the title of this video, you already know what it is. But if you don't know what from Sense of a Hat videos are, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then let's get into the video. First things first, hi, my name is Kristen. I might look a little different than normal. I decided to go carrot red instead of royal blue for a little bit. So my hair is a little different right now. So hi, hi, welcome to my channel. I love to do these videos. So first things first, if you're unfamiliar with what scents from a hat are, I have to, I have to say this disclaimer every, every single time. This video is not to be taken seriously. This is a silly, fun comedy. I mean, if you could consider it comedy, just a fun video poking fun at the countless myriads of top 10 lists out there that seem to regurgitate the same fragrances, the same themes over and over and over again. And I myself am guilty of the same crime of doing the same types of lists with the same type of content. I am not sitting here saying, that I don't. But what scents from a hat are is basically, if you look in this hat, I got some scenarios, I got some adjectives, and we put together sometimes a truly random top 10 list. Some of them are very tame, like beast mode fragrances for New Year's Eve parties, and other ones are a little bit more salacious, like gross fragrances for spring or pungent fragrances to pretend you're a wizard. They've gone all over the place. So that's what's fun about these videos is that the, the choices are very random, but at the end of the day, I do take what I choose very seriously. So it is kind of a challenge for me too. So let us see what the hat has chosen. And what I mean when I said in the beginning of this video is obviously in the title, you guys already know what the hat has chosen. But as of this time, I have no idea what the hat has chosen. So let's see what the hat has for us today, shall we? Now, the last time I did this video, it was like sense to embrace being a cat person, which was very much up my alley. And every time I do these videos, I ask for you guys for recommendations for what to put in said hat. Because whenever I choose an adjective or a scenario, they get retired out of the hat. They go, don't go back in. So I'm just letting you guys know I don't know what I'm choosing. So the adjective is what types of fragrance are we going to choose? We are going to choose uplifting. So uplifting fragrances. Now I have my scenarios right here. I'm trying not to, I'm still getting used to wearing a microphone. So I, I sometimes I realize that I kind of don't, don't use a microphone well. So as you can see, I, I, I don't know. Like I'm just randomly picking. So let's see. Okay, to go to the disco. So we'll do five, five instead of 10 fragrances. We'll do five uplifting fragrances to go to the disco. Okay, I'm back. I chose five. I'm going to do like that, but that's 10. Five fragrances. I decided to choose five fragrances because the idea of being uplifting changes the idea of a disco fragrance, clubbing, dancing fragrance. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't just choosing fragrances to make this list on the longer side, so you know, to kind of milk as many minutes into these videos as possible. And I also decided that my criteria for uplifting fragrance was going to be more sparkly, but still very present florals on the skin. So normally when I do these videos, I try to figure out what my criteria is and I go with that and then I choose. Now I decided to also stick with feminine fragrances for this video, but you could obviously wear anything. So the first one I picked is a newer fragrance to my collection. I don't have a review of this yet. And it is the new fragrance from Victor and Rolf and it is Flower Bomb. This is the Flanker Ruby Orchid. I will be doing a review of this. Now I do really enjoy Flower Bomb. <laughs> fragrance and one of my favorite flankers ever is Rose Explosion. I need to get some of the, I sold one of my La Vie and Rose flankers. I kind of miss it. I do really love this. I smelled this in Sephora. I was going to purchase this. They actually ended up sending me this. So I was really excited. 
I know a lot of people are comparing this to Nectar and they think that it is a lesser version of Nectar. And when I do my review, I am gonna be hypercritical on this comparing it to Nectar. So do not worry about that. But the reason why I liked this phrase, fragrance and the reason why I chose this for this is actually because of how it differs from nectar and how it differs from nectar is it's almost lighter more translucent on the skin than nectar is i think nectar smells a little bit more rich a little bit more indulgent a little bit more special on the skin and i have like mini bottles of nectar that i wear that i i love and i don't know why i haven't purchased a bottle of it yet and what I like about Ruby Orchid is the fact that it is a little bit more light on the skin. It's not as present as the other fragrances in the line, even the La Vie and Rose fragrances, which to me were a little bit more lighter and transparent than the other fragrances that are Flower Bomb flankers. But I actually really enjoy the way that this particularly smells on my skin. Now the uplifting part that I wanted to choose was something that was light, had the effect of something slightly musky, slightly sparkly, slightly airy, but also would work well in an environment where you were dancing and you wanted to make an impression with your fragrance. Something that was easy to smell, not so much mainstream in a negative way, but mainstream in a way that it would grab attention and for the most part people would be gravitating towards it because it smells really pretty and attractive. And a lot of people view mainstream fragrances as being kind of like a negative, but I actually view it as a positive. Proud, pleasing fragrances. I can say words not all the time, but sometimes I can say words. They're designed to be mass appealing and by design supposed to smell beautiful. Like they're, they're supposed to smell really, 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 really good. That's why a lot of people like them because they smell really, 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 really good. And I think that Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid works as the uplifting type of fragrance. There's something light, a little bit revitalizing about it. Not as good as nectar in regards to other flankers in the Flower Bomb family, but as an uplifting fragrance that would still make an impression, add confidence and be beautiful to wear out clubbing, to maybe give you a boost of confidence or maybe kind of help grab some type of attention if you're going out on the prowl. I think this would be a great fragrance that would meet all the criteria that the hat has chosen. This next one was a gift. This was sent to be by another a reviewer um, among the stars perfume. One thing I love about his reviews is how seriously he takes celebrity fragrances. I think sometimes celebrity scents and a lot of designer scents are overlooked in the fragrance community, especially amongst reviewers and collectors, because I think people just dismiss the artistry that goes into them. And I goes into them. I can say words. Remember, sometimes I can say words. And what I love about his channel is he is so knowledgeable and he's so passionate, but he also has such good taste and he's so eloquent when describing these fragrances. And he's definitely like ignited a love and a respect for celebrity scents. So we did a few years ago, we did an exchange. We exchanged like samples and decants and he actually sent me a bottle of Britney Spears Prerogative. And I actually love this fragrance. So this is something that I would describe as being semi-warm spicy. It's got some beautiful florals in there. It's light and musky and effervescent. And it's got this really sexy coffee note. Now this isn't going to smell like some crazy high-end, super expensive niche experience, but if you're looking for an uplifting scent that will make an impression if you're going out dancing and you wanna douse yourself in something delicious and fruity and floral and sexy and slightly spicy that has a delicious little coffee note in there, I think this is going to be great. It's not heavy and the lightness that this has while still being a very indulgent fragrance, I find is uplifting enough to make it on this list. And I do really like this fragrance a if lot. If you want something a little bit spicy but still has that effervescent, uplifting, dazzling aspect to it, Aqua Allegoria, Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria line, Ginger Picante. This is a beautiful spicy fragrance that has a blast of citrus and florals in the opening that will definitely make an impression. You can overspray this one if you're an oversprayer and it doesn't really overtake you. Some fragrances you can't overspray, like they get too heavy, too suffocating. 
a little too like you kind of feel like you're drowning in it this one actually doesn't I feel kind of like I, I kind of like overspraying this one I like overspraying a lot of aqua allegoria this one on my skin too lasts a little bit longer and of the aqua allegoria line I find this one to be more sexy a little bit more salacious more sassy because of that spiciness I love the citrus in the opening again it's giving that little uplifting boost that revitalizing little sparkly tingle and zing that you're looking for but the spiciness in here with the florals is really sexy and great if you're trying to make an impression with your fragrance, especially if you're going out dancing to a club. The nice thing too about this fragrance is even though it does have a spiciness to it, it's not a heavy suffocating fragrance like some of these other ones. So if you like to be a little less heavy with your fragrance in regards to sometimes if I know I'm going to be dancing, I'll tell you a little dancing story about me at the end of this video and you're gonna be sweaty and you're gonna be in a crowd. Sometimes people don't want to wear anything too heavy. They want something a little bit lighter, but they still want that spiciness, that sexiness, that floral kind of like presence. This is great. It's not a heavy fragrance, but it has a lot of bones on the skin. So if you're going to be in a hot environment dancing all night and you still want to smell sexy, but you want, don't want to be suffocating or overpowering with your fragrance, this is a great one. But again, that citrus boost and the ginger in here is uplifting and gorgeous and perfect for dancing. Last and certainly not least is Royal Princess Oud from Creed. I love this fragrance. I find this to be a little bit more on the fruity, sophisticated side, but there's something about the woods in here that I find to just be a little bit different than the sparkly florals and the citruses. That's very grounding and I find that to be very uplifting. And I find that this is very tutti fruity in a way that's just really fun and perfect for making an impression if you're going out to the club and dancing. So I really wanted to include this one, even though it's not as uplifting as the others, I think this would be really great. So those are my picks. First and foremost, if you agree with my picks or you disagree with my picks, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any other recommendations for the hat, adjectives, scenarios, or the like, let me know. I will put those in. Or if you have any recommendations for uplifting fragrances to wear to the disco, let me know below. I would love to know what you guys say. But now, now let me tell you about my dancing story. So I used to live in Miami. I lived all over the Tri-County area in like Palm Beach and Broward County and Dade County, all over. If you lived in the Southern Florida, you know what the Tri-County area is. So when I lived in Miami, I used to go out every single night, go out dancing and to clubs with my friends all the time. And I can't dance at all. I took dance classes when I was young. Um, ballet, just dance. I, I, I was never good. I was always that girl off to the side, kind of looking at the floor or doing my own thing. No, I, could, I can't dance. I, ha I am not graceful at all, obviously. I'm pretty sure you guys have got that. But I love to go out with my friends. I was less introverted than I am now, and a lot of my chronic illnesses weren't as um, a lot more present in my life. It's, it's, it's fun, let me tell you, yeah, no, no bueno. But I love going out with my friends, and especially when you're like a bartender in Miami, you tend to just, it's part of your job. It's just kind of fun. You sometimes, like after you bartend, you go out with clients and you go out dancing and you just have fun. And I can't dance and all of my friends and all of my clients and my regulars, they, they could dance. I, I, I couldn't dance. So we had a great system. First and foremost, we always had a designated driver. We always had one person that would drive and pick everyone up and drop everyone off. So whenever it was my turn, th this never happened. But when it wasn't my turn, my friends would say, come out, we will pay for your drinks, we will pay for your entry fee, do not dance because no matter what wherever I would dance there would they would make a circle around me people would walk away from me because they didn't want me to be associated with them I am that dancer I don't know if people I don't know if any of you guys play video games if any of you guys have played the video game Mass Effect I love Mass Effect you know how Shepard dances Shepard is a is a terrific dance compared to me so bad such a bad dancer and people that my friends and people that didn't even know me if I was dancing they just would stand away so I'd have my own little circle and instead of people kind of being like hey they'd be like 
oh, horrified. So my friends, to spare me and them, they would say, Kristen, you just go over there and uh, you're not you're not coming near us. So yeah, that's my story is nobody ever wants me dancing ever. And I don't blame them after seeing a video of me. It was it was cringy. It was bad. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I know different hair, but I'm doing something. I'm doing something different. We're gonna we're gonna be a carrot for a while. And if you guys didn't know, I'm actually a natural ginger, not not carrot, but I'm I'm actually a natural redhead so this is closer to my natural color than royal blue obviously so I hope you guys can handle the change for a little bit but thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time bye